studies because in the year 2000 or thereabouts when um, Eastern European countries were admitted to the European Union a condition of their admission was that they end, put an end to discrimination against the Roma uh, that existed in their countries particularly in education uh, and from the point of view of my involvement school segregation I had for many years um, been um, on the staff of and then the director of an organization called the NAACP Legal Defense and Educational Fund which was in the business of desegregating schools in the United States and I was one of the lawyers who argued Brown against Board of Education which brought me to the attention of the people who were concerned with segregation of schools in Europe and so they wanted to see whether I could contribute any wisdom to uh, the tasks they were undertaking. Um, I was happy to become involved and then be began to learn about the segregation of Roma which in many ways resembles the segregation and discrimination against African Americans in the, in the United States and in many ways is very different from it. Uh, and as my interest increased I became more and more involved in uh, Romani studies. Um, I've made a number of trips to Eastern Europe and otherwise study the subject matter um, and recently have just come back from the most recent of a number of trips this time to Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria, Greece and France for over the last five weeks returned just uh, less than a week ago uh, and I guess it's easy enough to describe the bottom line of my uh, travels and inquiry is that there's been no meaningful change in the status of Roma uh, during the period that I've been studying it. There have been some interesting improvements and some interesting regressions but overall they're pretty much just as bad off as they were uh, when the matter first came to my attention. Um, as an example, um, uh, the European Court of Human Rights in the last several years has condemned the educational practices of the Czech Republic, of Greece, and of uh, Croatia. Uh, the uh, Czech Republic was held in violation of the European Court of U European Convention of Human Rights in a famous case called D.H. against the Czech Republic uh, and everyone thought that, that was the Brown v. Board of Education of, um, of uh, segregation of Roma in Eastern Europe but it was nothing of the sort at all. Uh, the Czech Republic has not yet complied has been re dealing with the matter in the classic bureaucratic uh, reaction which consists of meetings, conferences uh, and uh, drawing up of plans uh, and uh, then uh, waiting to be provoked into the, the next round of meetings, conferences and bureaucratic plans. Um, the um, government of Greece uh, which was found guilty of school segregation in a case called Sampanis uh, was not even as subtle as the Czechs. Uh, they just flatly did not do anything about the segregated schools in the Sampanis case. And in my visit to Greece less than two weeks ago, uh, we, my wife and I and others went to the village where the Roma children had been segregated and found that uh, the uh, school that they, from which the uh, Roma children had been excluded was continuing to exclude them uh, and that the uh, village from which the uh, Roma community had the temerity 
to insist upon attending the um, what is now referred to as the quote white school um, uh, just dealt with by bulldozing the village away and so the village is no longer there the Roma are going to a school elsewhere from a new village which is under construction and we visited the new village where the water supply is not yet assured it's being sort of pumped in on a daily and weekly basis so uh, and not, uh, not a lot has uh, happened uh, in, um, uh, in, in Greece or anywhere else. Uh, there are some, some improvements, some little sparks of light, which consist almost exclusively of uh, initiatives taken by NGOs, uh, principally the uh, um, Open Society Institute and the World Bank and the European institutions uh, collectively uh, and, uh, and there are some, of the, some such uh, inspiring examples that one can come across but again they are few and far between and they are private initiatives not the initiative of governments and it is a, a rare government uh, that I've observed uh, in the few places where there has been desegregation that has actually been involved constructively in it. So, uh, maybe there are a few more that are involved constructively, but uh, almost none of them are doing any funding of it. And so it's all uh, outside uh, support for the changes that the European Convention promises. Um, I've written a long article about it, and Gwen Albert is here, and I are doing a book about, not only about education, but about um, segregation and treatment of Roma generally throughout, uh, throughout Europe. Um, well, I'm, my previous studies led me to a series of conclusions, which I will just share with you. Um, and. Uh, uh, I don't anticipate there will be much change, though there will be many new and different examples. And these are some things that must be done. I might say at the outset, when I make these proposals, what I am talking about are not um, principles that ought to, be, ought to be embodied in conventions and treaties. Um, I'm talking about practical um, action that must be taken. But that practical action is something that requires political decisions and not uh, um, deduction from first principles. Uh, you cannot, I think the lesson I've learned from all of this and from the United States desegregation, you cannot escape the politics. Uh, and the politics are going to determine uh, what's going to be happening with Roma uh, in, um, in with regard to education and other aspects of desegregation. So let me just go over once more the things that I propose and urge, and I think we're not going to be able to escape the need for any of them. And first of all, to act effectively, Europe needs information. One of the first things one learns when one gets into the Roma business is that the answer you get to any question is, we don't know the information isn't there, nobody knows who a Roma is, nobody knows where a Roma is, and so forth and so on. And nobody knows when changes are required and made. And somebody's going to have to nail all this down. And I have urged that there be the creation of something, like, for want of a better term, I call an Inspector General of the European Union, with the Inspector General of the European Union tasked with the job of finding out where there is disparate treatment of Roma, where there is segregation, uh, how it happens and when it happens. Uh, and no, no, no fooling around with, we don't know, we can't find out, and so forth. The information is all there to be found, uh, but uh, somebody has to identify and describe it. Um, the second principle is that where segregation existed or discrimination existed, it must cease immediately. Uh, there are techniques that are 
well known in the United States which work. Uh, the United States has uh, not been innocent in all of this and it does a lot that doesn't work. Uh, but uh, there has to be uh, techniques that are known like transportation uh, and funds uh, have to be provided. This should not be the obligation of the NGOs uh, which often pay for it. It's the obligation of the governments involved. Uh, desegregation must be treated systemically. You can't have a system in which you desegregate a school and all the whites, as they're now called, flee to another school, you end up with segregation again. That's a term which has been appropriated to Eastern Europe called white flight, and there are ways of stopping white flight by preventing neighboring schools or peripheral schools from admitting the people who flee the schools that are being desegregated. That can be done too if there's a will to do it. Their responsibilities, the way the European Union is set up is the European Court of Human Rights or the Convention on Human Rights says what the rule ought to be. Uh, then the, um, uh, the national government of, let us say, Hungary or uh, Slovakia is told what it should do. Then it tells uh, the municipal government and the municipal government tells the school. You can see all the opportunities are for slippage here and the slippage always occurs. So the European Court of Human Rights tells the Czech government don't, de don't segregate. Czech government uh, well, didn't even pass a law saying they shouldn't allow the segregation. They finally passed when the president vetoed it, but finally when it was passed over his veto, uh, nothing was required of the municipalities, and they're still holding their conferences. Uh, thirdly, private litigation ought to be encouraged. Uh, we found with American segregation and discrimination, uh, governmental and for law enforcement is too susceptible to political pressures. Private litigation uh, required to be funded by the government uh, he, he provides uh, the kind of an initiative that is not susceptible to the politics. Uh, finally, um, um, speaking of all the requirements that I would impose upon the um, various nations and members of the European community, one final step that is vital is something that the Roma themselves and not the European community must do. The Roma must make clear and do so forcefully that they cannot continue to tolerate subordination. After centuries of subjugation, including slavery, second-class citizenship, ethnic cleansing, oppression under communism, and stigmatization in the modern world, the Roma must launch a Roma rights movement to claim their own freedom, and they must take steps to cast off their shackles. Uh, until all these things happen, we're not going to have the result that we're all hoping for.